Yo calling Bara douche Bara douche We alive Oi Babushka We alive It's alive Alright Good evening Good evening everyone Good evening Danny Nikolai and Peter Hello my friends Good evening Borakis Borakis How how are we this evening? Beautiful. It's a beautiful evening in the Copenhagen of City of Denmark. <laughs> oh, what's that is? Vice versa. <laughs> um, and how about you, Danny, in Roskilde? Uh, it's, uh, it's great. Just got a relatively bad but uh, needed news today that uh, they're going to extend the the lockdown, so to say. So, But it's all good. It's uh, necessary steps towards a better world. Health first. And uh, what about you, Nikolai, up in Stockholm? Yeah, it's good, but I have a dog that wants to eat stuff he's not supposed to eat, so. <laughs> okay. I think it's okay. less annoying or less troubling than having your kids at home and having to keep them entertained, so I can't I, complain. I think so too, but but Sonic is too, so. I, uh, I, I tend to agree. You know, I don't <laughs> have a dog. I, I, I think I'm, uh, I'm having uh, the, <laughs> the more difficult. <laughs> life at the moment as you can hear perhaps on this tone anyway uh we got almost an hour of uh questions and answers coming in uh we put out a post earlier today uh asking uh, or telling people that they could uh, hit us with questions and of course we'll be answering a bunch of questions from the twitch chat as well um do you guys i think before we, we go really into to, to the questions, uh, as, as you all know, EPL is, uh, is well underway. We got games going on right now. You should go and tune in, uh, especially after this stream, but, but you can also use this one as a second monitor. Um, but, but to you, um, to you uh, guys, Sonic and, and players, uh, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I don't know. That's funny. Hey! I think we'll go out to Sonic first. So how, how's it been uh, since you weren't on the stream uh, uh, last time? How's it been coaching from home, uh, playing EPL uh, online? I mean, I think it's, it's let's be honest, it has been a bit weird. Um, the way that we work, it's... We are so used to uh, us sitting together uh, at our hotel room. Everything has been planned accordingly, but, but it's no excuse. Uh, we have high expectations of ourselves and expect to go far in this tournament. Even though that I think that what's what we can learn from from uh, from EPL online here is that there's no like there's no real favorites. Everyone can beat uh, like you see the smaller teams uh, beat some of the big teams, and I think that it's um, it's actually tougher than you think uh, because there's no pressure. And for us, maybe people take it a bit lightly. Uh, I think that we we. Uh, I have never had a feeling that we did that, but it, it has been it has been tough in a different way and, and a bit weird. But I think that we have after some some talks after the first game, I think that we have we have found our way of of preparing um, and and playing the approaching the the games. That's good. And and after a bit of a rocky start, dare I say, you have won three in a row. Uh, you beat Spirit, was it yesterday? Uh, yes. Peter, how do you see those uh, two last games versus Ents and Spirit? Um, I think the obviously the harder game was against Ents. Um, I wouldn't say that Ents is necessarily like uh, the the better team out of those two. I think both teams have a great potential to to really make some da uh, create some damage. Um, I don't know why the Ents game felt tougher. I I feel like we should also have won two series against Ents because we had a really a big lead on Inferno and we seem to have troubles closing out that game. But in, in hindsight, I'm just uh, I'm just really happy uh, that we won. But um, and then against against Spirit, I I just think we overall played better as a team and we played better as individuals. And and when you start doing that, then obviously you also end up winning the game a lot faster. So I think we we overall just played better against Spirit than we did against Ents. Um, but both games were really important for us to win, especially to to bounce back in uh, in EPL. So that was uh, that was really great. All right, thank you. And uh, let's just dive headfirst into uh, all the questions um, that we've received. We've ob obviously received a bunch on uh, on the S Tech signing announcement. Uh, we'll we'll obviously answer a couple of them, and then we'll also uh, make sure that we answer all. The other questions that, that you guys have for us out there. Um, Can you still hear me? Hello? Yeah. 
Okay, I pull. I unplug my headset. That's a mistake. I'm sorry. Okay. Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, so we have a question that that uh, about Estec. Uh, it's from Gustav, and uh, Danny. He's asking, who's Estec going to replace? And maybe you can shed some light on on uh, how 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 this whole uh, situation and setup will be. Is is he a reserve, a substitute, or or, or, or how is it? So I have no idea who he's going to replace. Uh, and that's the reason why I'm saying that is that uh, Patrick is coming in to to help the team because we are living in an environment where people get physically and mentally exhausted by, by uh, traveling so much. I know that right now that sounds a bit uh, lame because we are we're not traveling anywhere at all. Um, but usually we are we are traveling quite a lot and Due to past experience and the way that we 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 do things, I think that it's uh it's definitely worth a try. Um, Patrick is um he's a versatile player who has uh, he, he's um, he's a really good player that can play a lot of positions and he can in game lead. He can do pretty much everything and he's a good guy. Like Casper, uh, our director of sports, has uh, has worked with him from the time in in heroic. Um, and everything just suits the way that we work and and he's a perfect fit for us. Um, in terms of like people have talked a lot about, are we going to use them? So let's say that we go to a tournament, six guys or six players, and then me, and then we're gonna we're gonna definitely use S attack on Inferno, uh, and then we can we can use the vice on, on train. It's not gonna be like that. Uh, for me, it's about making sure that everybody is is uh, <laughs> is fit to play. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's fit to play and is uh, like mentally fit, especially. I think that it's in. It's important to acknowledge that you see a lot of players um, going down. Maybe it's stress related, or you can actually develop some sort of physical uh, stuff with your body due to traveling so much. Uh, you recently we just saw Alex in Vitality, probably living his life a, a good life and in, in Vitality, making a lot of money playing video games. But there's just too much traveling. Um, so I think that it's the right approach. Um, it shows that as far as and especially the team behind. Uh, always think about the player's health and well-being. Um, so for me, um, when when Casper uh, talked about this six-player, I was more from from like the old school saying, ah, doesn't work. We we have tried it before, but I think that the way that we are approaching it now, uh, we 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 definitely have a shot. But and we want to go first, um, be first movers on a lot of things, and and why not be the first mover here as well? Yeah, because you're not adding. Uh, a substitute, you're, you're expanding the roster, right? Yeah, I mean, Patrick is going to be a, a vital part of our practice. Um, we have seen uh, nowadays, usually the teams have a coach and an analyst in. Um, there's there's uh, there's no question about that. Whenever we, we, uh, we ride the 1st of July and, and Patrick joins the team, he's going to be uh, uh, an integrated part of, of the team. He's going to be in practice. He's probably going to take over uh, something. Um, I'm going to have some individual talks with him and, and he can contribute tactically as well. Um, and then we'll take it from there step by step. So basically, like any other player on the team, obviously with a transition period, but but uh, following that? Yeah, definitely. It's not going to be like in uh, November or October, I'm just going to call Patrick, okay, now we need you. Uh, it's it's not going to be like that. And he's just going to sit and not having uh, played with the team. He's going to he's gonna be, uh, yeah, as I said before, an integrated part of the, of the team from the get-go. Mm. That's interesting, and we already have like comments on any plans for seven-man roster, etc. Obviously, you, you can't say too much about that right now, but <laughs> <laughs> no, one step at a time. I, I promise you, there won't be any seventh player um, anytime soon. All right, thank you for for the question and and a great response from uh, from Sonic. Uh, Mino is asking, and uh, let's go to the vice with this one. Uh, what are your thoughts on having to wait so long for the major? It being postponed until November. Ah, nice. You're, you're yeah. muted. Muted. <laughs> uh, it doesn't work. Uh, it works. Uh, it works. Uh, yeah, what I was saying is that I think it's quite natural with everything that's happening around the world. Uh, I don't think any player, uh, fan or anything would like to travel and put themselves in the risk of actually getting sick or spreading the, the disease. So I think it's just a natural um, development of the, the whole world situation. And, and honestly, it's going to create a lot of hype for the next major. Um, so yeah, I think in my opinion is uh, you get try to get the the best situation out of it. I don't think any any player 
would actually have wanted an online major, I don't think it 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 shows respect to the legacy that the previous majors have had, etc. Uh, so I think that for me it's just, and I know for the team as well, it's it's just a good thing, and and we'll have more time to prepare. Yeah, uh, I for one is looking very much forward, especially it still being in Brazil. Um, Peter. Odie mm -hmm. from uh, Twitter is asking, would you ever bring bre br bring back the documentary Astralis to the Stars? I know it's not perhaps your decision, but... Uh... <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, I think it would be very cool to, to sometimes in the future have a more... Like back in the days when we made Two Stars, uh, which was um, made I internally by uh, Matthew, which is now in freelancing. Um, Matthew Trulove, go follow. Matthew him. Trulove, yeah, yeah Matthew. Him. He's oh, like yeah. uh, he's like one of the best guys in esports. So if you if you haven't followed him yet, go see his work and everything. But uh, when we created it back in the days, it felt more like um, a thing you couldn't see the potential in, and also the fact that esports at that time and Astralis at that time was not as big as it is right now. I think it would be very nice to have maybe instead of just having one guy having to rely on, on on filming and creating all the things that has to be done around this type of, of documentary, you should have like a whole team um, that is coordinating everything and making like a really in-depth documentary about the team if there's actually time for it and if people are up for it. I think that would be very interesting. And a little bit like you see the one that Valve has done in Dota um, for with, with TrueSight, maybe just uh, with another approach, I think would be very interesting to have in Counter-Strike right? because... I think even if you're not a Dota fan, I think you should definitely go watch True Side and, and also enjoy it if you're just an esports fans in general. All right. Um, we have a, a bunch uh, of people uh, uh, texting or, or asking. Uh, I thought Sonic was the sixth man. <laughs> you have some incredible beer right now, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. Ah! Yeah, I, I can go like I can go grab it like this. <sighs> I have no uh, idea that's that's on. also a huge issue we have to discuss. Like all the hairdressers in Denmark are closed. <laughs> Look at my hair; it's so big. It's so my beard is gonna, uh, probably going to be around my knee when, uh, when yeah. I get out of here. Just to, so, uh, just to. Uh, that's uh, absolutely to perfect. <laughs> yeah, interrupt like, the, the beard and the like hair talk. Uh, um, <laughs> and, and to finish up the to the start documentary, uh, you can go watch it on on the Astralis YouTube. It's it's actually there, and then maybe get inspired. We always, you know, take uh, feedback uh, wherever you you write us, whether it's um, our Instagram, <laughs> Twitter, or Facebook. What? Oh my God, it's too late. I mean, it's a it's a Cinderella story. Like, uh, obviously, it, it, actually, biased, it was good but, timing. Uh, it was good timing. But it starts from from uh, going very bad, like almost shit, to uh, to actually uh, winning a major, and you see the whole transition of the team. Yeah, so it's uh, winning a major, right? It ends with a major one. Yeah, yeah just sitting in the car. Mihai Andre <laughs> from uh, from Twitter is is asking, and this is in game related. What happens when one of the guys are on fire? Uh, do the rest of you start to play around him, or do you, do you generally stick to the game plan? I think we always stick to the game plan, right? I think on CT, it's more or less the the person that plays well, or uh, I mean, also playing well also correlates in taking more initiative at least on the ct side right so i just think that quite naturally um that player will probably um call some setups that is uh, favorable for him uh so uh, let's say um nuke for example if clave is playing a good game he will probably pay, play maybe a little bit more offensive in the outside position and have good reads so what happens when you are playing a good game, it also means that most of the decisions you make can be 50-50 decisions, but it will probably 80 -20, be 80-20 in, uh, in your favor because you are playing a good game and you will have the timing with you. Uh, it's, it's kind of a weird thing in CS, but um, it kind of works like that. So so yeah, I guess you play a little bit. Uh, I you, you play into the... You try to make the, I don't know how to say it, like the, the player on T side, he will just follow the game plan, but on CD side, he will just, uh, you know, play um, setups that are favorable for him. I guess that's the best way to say it, right? Nice microphone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is it bad? Uh, yeah. It's really bad. Yeah, it's, really bad. It's, okay. it's okay. It's okay. Also, uh, it's not a also beat, so. just to add yeah. to that question, I think that it also depends on which players like going is on fire. If Civic is on fire, he usually just 
stays calm and and just uh, maybe clutch a little bit here and there. Whereas if Peter is on fire, he he will probably go in and and take more initiative and say, okay, I'm I'm gonna peek here, and then Glaive is just gonna be like, yeah, sure, go ahead. All right, and and to follow up on that, uh, we got a bunch of questions asking, who is the most skilled player on the team and i assume they we need to look at this raw talent wise because there are like multiple skills to have in a game such as counter-strike uh perhaps it's a question for you actually danny if you <laughs> dare uh, <to> answer. <laughs> how do i pick between my kids like it's yeah, uh, exactly okay um i've always said i also i actually think i wrote that in my book um i think that peter has the like the the most raw skill for like computer games which is like if you if we start to download a game with Peter, it will take him. Uh, don't sit over there and smile. Just I'm not uh, smiling. Uh, 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 it will take him ten, ten minutes. Ten minutes, and then he will be able to to almost semi master the game. He's like he's really good with PC games in general. Uh, but there's like a lot of factors of of being a good Counter Strike player. Um, but I would say like in, in raw skills, when when Peter is going absolutely crazy, he is. Uh, he has one of the best. Uh, he's one of the best aimers, if not the best. Thank you, nice. Coach. Yeah. I hope yeah. it's all right, Devin. How are you, know, you about, uh, about you? How are you I actually agree, honestly. I Nikla, he has like um, the whole package of everything. Yeah, he has the whole package. package. You said yeah, it on exactly. the past live stream that that you uh, that you thought um, that you thought uh, Dupree could be a more you know raw skilled AWPA than yourself, right? Was wasn't that how you put it? I'm trying, and now you're just dragging me down. I don't know yeah. what you're trying to. <laughs> what, you're trying, what are you trying okay, to say? Nah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, think I, I might have said something like yeah. that. I don't know. I was just watching Cappy fall off the map on Vertigo. So. Oh, I watched that. I should have watched that. <laughs> okay, uh, we this got turned, this a really good question. This is turned into a pleasing like, show of me. I like it. Yeah, 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 but you are you are nice, Peter. So uh, thank you so much. It's uh, it's fair. Uh, we got a really good question from the great E Dane. Uh, I have been wondering. Oh my God, this chat is going nuts. Uh, feel free to follow and, and subscribe yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. however uh, uh, streamers <laughs> usually put it uh, while I try to find the use, question uh, your Twitch use Twitch Prime I, yeah use Twitch Prime uh, I've been wondering for a while okay now I just try to remember uh, Sonic, why aren't you fist bumping your players like other coaches are fist bumping their players this isn't to not disturb them or, or? No. social uh, distancing yeah no i have to say the corona no it's it's just that i've never been a fan of it like there are these five guys are fist bumping each other all over the place all the time uh, so if uh, me coming into the picture that would just it would just look stupid like all the time up and down sideways whoop, 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 whoop. that would just be it would just be lame for me it's just about Maybe I'll go and pat them on the shoulder. I even uh, if if they can can feel me like patting the back of the head, they know that they've done something great because that's like me almost about to kiss them. Um, so have you ever so, kissed a player? Uh, like a game? I think you kissed the picture at one point. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, maybe yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Can't really Probably remember. doing a clutch, but, but but for me it, it has never been. It's never been part of. I, I don't think that we did it that much in one point six. I can't remember. Like. Um, yeah, I, I don't think play... there are any webcams on you, so... Uh... Yeah, I, I still play occasionally with MJE back from uh, from back in the days with MCW. Uh, and uh, I might ask him because I can't remember we did that back in the day. So, yeah, I, I've never been a fan of it. Like, the players are doing it to each other all the time. It would just, yeah, they might hurt their hand if they did it. With you me. want us to stop? <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. You'll probably get the... Uh, what's that geek putting his name? Geek uh, to... uh, arthritis, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Insta. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, we got a cool. comment from or oh, and a question. Svensson one one one. Astralis. Hey guys. I had no idea you had a Twitch channel. We do. Follow it. Uh, subscribe if you want to. There'll be plenty of more content in the future. Right, guys? Yes. Um, he's Svensson is also rooting for for us uh, in the ESL, and asking when our next match is. And it is tomorrow at uh, yes. 10 p.m. Central European time. You can go uh -oh. to a GG slash calendar and you'll find uh, all the uh, upcoming matches there. Um, so how are you seeing this Vitality uh, match, Dupree? 
um, I think it's going to be really exciting in, in a lot of ways. And <clears throat> first and foremost, I think it's going to be exciting because it is considered to be like, well, it could potentially be like the battle of who gets the first seat out of our group. And um, oh. and in that sense, uh, it's going to be really interesting, I think. I think they are a team that is also trying out a new composition. The fact that Alex is no longer in the team. So I th I'm not even sure who's actually... I think it's Apex who's calling the tactics right now. It is. Yes. Which is really, really, which is really interesting for me, uh, because he is supposedly to have the same role as I do, being like very aggressive and and intro fracking. and I think obviously he's where the action is, but I still think that it's gonna take away some of his uh, individual uh, prowess, and uh, yeah, well, we'll see how that works out, but it's gonna be interesting to see how they play. But I'm um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, and it's like the supposed to be like the top tier game of our group. No, uh, I mean we also lost against NMP, and NMP is playing extremely well right now, but. If people would look on the paper, I think they would look mostly forward to play uh, to us playing in Vitality. So yeah, all good. All right, thank you. Um, we got one from Nisipilan. 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 Personally, Nisipilan. I think Sipex is one of the best and smartest player to ever be on the server. Do you guys <laughs> think he gets the credit he deserves? Danny, do uh, you credit? Yeah. Do you credit Sip? Uh, I think that uh, <laughs> I think I've given him uh, a lot of credit on the team. Like he's he's like the perfect guy to have on the team. Um, also, like outside of the game, he's so calm, um, well thought. There was there was very few issues with Andreas uh, all over the line. So he's um, mm -hmm. yeah, he's really stable both out of the server and also on the server. Oh, and Panama Joe just subscribed. Panama Joe, guys, welcome. Panama. Welcome to the team. Panama Panama. Joe uh, was uh, the last time. Is that Stain? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's hello, Stain. <laughs> hello. Um, um, Flying Kangaroo, he's asking how big of a difference is there between playing online versus offline land tournaments? Uh, and will this difference make it so that you have to take tournament results with a grain of salt? Uh, and device, uh, I have to tell you from Douglas Fernandez, microphone uh, is scratching through your zipper. So uh, I think if you just... And that is because he do not have a turtle beach right now. Turtle beach! Turtle beach! Turtle beach! Okay, I will try to secret lab chair. hold it Thank like you. this. Anyway, yeah, exactly. Secret, um, secret lab. How big of a difference is there? Very big. Not bad, big. And uh, do you think that, like, should people see these results as temporary? Or should they take them? No. Serious because then temporary will last long because I don't think we'll be playing a land tournament for a long time, so <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I, I that, also... uh, yeah, I guess honestly, of course, there are a lot of differences, but I think that, um, in the coming weeks, everyone will be taking like the games more and more seriously. I think we're treating it as we would do at, at a land tournament. A lot of teams are playing from the offices as well where they they live closely together so it's easy for them and accessible so i don't think you can take it with a grain of salt um but it, it's hard right because um it's it's always been like that everyone has always been treating online games as they're just some sort of warm-up or um you just have to get in the top six to qualify for ESL pro league finals or something like that right but now it's you're playing for the big prize pool and you really have to treat it as a as a land game I think that the fans can take it with a grain of salt, but the team should definitely always try to uh, to go for a win. And it doesn't matter if it's online, if it's offline, you should go for for the win every time. I think one of the one of the things to 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 address in in this question is that, and I think it was uh, the guys on the like the talent of uh, Pro League the other day. They mentioned and, and had a really good point in my opinion that so a team like us and the teams that's within the, the top 10 are constantly traveling around the world playing only um, land matches and, and big tournaments whereas the teams that are actually inside of well that's actually participating in the tournament right now as well have been playing for maybe tons of uh, tons of years now playing online qualifiers and playing online matches only whereas that is that's what they know that's what they're good at that's what they that's where they strive. Uh, whereas we have always felt um, 
that when we sit on LAN and play these big, big matches, you also have to check into mental game and like the fact that, that there's a crowd playing around you and there's also like the nerve, the factor of being nervous and, and daring to make the plays that you maybe only dare doing at home. So when you go up against these type of teams that are all of a sudden used to play online qualifiers and play with this type of pressure just at home, you all of a sudden see a, a completely different game. And, and I think it takes a little bit of time to adjust in, in, in the way that you you need to be able to to dare make all the things that you, you do at tournaments as well and then all those uh, type of things. I think that's very important as well to adjust. Yeah, that's a really good uh, response. And, and Device, on the last uh, live stream, you actually mentioned something about being used to sit next to your teammates using their monitors as well and their body language and, and such uh, is is a huge difference from sitting online uh, by yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't know what to add to that. You said no, no. basically everything, right? So, uh... <laughs> no, that's fine. Then I, I have a good memory. Sure, sure. Yeah. And, and what about I, you, I, Sonic? I, uh, sorry. I, How do you see the, the online offline uh, uh, comparison? I, I can see what they're talking about, but at this level, there is no excuse. Like, I mean, it's. Uh... I'm not looking for excuses. I'm not no, looking no, but... I'm, I'm more like, where is the uh... difference? Not that it's supposed to make a, a, a difference result wise or performance wise. What's the difference in experience when it comes to you know playing uh, official matches online and offline? No, but I'm just thinking about what Peter said. Like we are used to the land environment; they're used to online. Yeah, but we're supposed to have better players and better tactics and stuff like that, and that should add up. Like I mean, I get that it's a bit more. I think that sometimes it comes down to us having a lot of routines on land, and that is difficult to maintain online. Um, but also, can you give examples like what are the like uh, we every time we we uh, we do everything as a team. We go down to the gym. We uh, eat breakfast. We have a team talk. Um, we uh, we talk about our opponents. I present some of the stuff that I've done uh, to the opponent. That has been a bit difficult here uh, online. Um, like trying, like really. If, telling the players what they should be aware of. I think that's much easier online. And you just have this that routines. And if you don't do that online, that becomes your philosophy. And if you don't do that online, I think it's, even though you want to, I think it's difficult to set yourself up in a way. Uh, but yeah, I, I still agree it's, it's, it's no excuse. And, and I can see why we see these uh, top teams uh, falling because we're not used to it, but uh, they should and must be taking it. Just as seriously as if it was down in Malta. See, see, that concludes that very good question. Uh, then we have one uh, in Danish. I'll, I'll translate. Um, how is it to be a person that a lot of people are looking up to? Uh, maybe go to device and Dupree first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, uh, I mean, it's uh, it's definitely a thing that's that's grown. Uh, that makes you grow as a person and also makes uh, the, the team grow because if you if you go back maybe like five or six years you we were just like well we're still ordinary persons obviously but at the same time we we've also gotten gotten something else on our shoulders but if you go back five to six years we were just these ordinary persons playing computer games for well trying to make uh, video games work for a living and there wasn't this type of uh, national hype or hype about players or anything we were just like people are always very like questioning when you told them that we were playing video games for a living so all of a sudden now you have you have fans all over all over the world but mainly here in denmark as well that that look up to you that ask for pictures and ask for autographs and whatnot when 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 they spot you and all of a sudden you have this kind of philosophy and atmosphere that you're some sort of a celebrity which is really really weird when you come from a point where you just feel like you're just a regular guy like everyone else and um yeah i mean like it's, it's really flattering and it's really nice to feel that the fans are appreciating all the things you're doing and just today, when I was down grocery shopping, the guy at the was like, oh, I really enjoy your team. I was like, oh, sure, thank you so much. Um, so you also have to appreciate the, all the love that you get from the fans and everyone that appreciates your work. So it's um, it's something that's really nice, but at the same time, it can also be a little bit difficult because there's a lot of expectations and, and stuff like that. Do you have anything to add or did he just hit the nail? No, I mean, like, I think uh, the other guys in the team, uh, they they experience it a lot more than me. Um, I live in Sweden, so uh, there's not a lot of people that recognize me here. I don't know if this speaks to you. Yeah, it, was, it, was yeah. this shit, it, it right? was better. It was better. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, 
yeah i don't know what to do here i i think that um i don't experience it that much honestly i experience it uh at land tournaments and and i'm used to it there and of course when i go to denmark um, there's a lot of exposure uh, and we're as peter said quite famous so sometimes it's kind of a reality check when i go to denmark because it's not something i really think about i just try to uh, live my own life and and of course um some sort of say you have to fulfill your your duty so to say to be a be a good example uh, try to set an example for what you want others um what what you value and what you want others to value as well right so i guess that's that's the most important factors about it all and and as peter said um just stay calm be yourself and then people will will like you hopefully <laughs> they like you <laughs> Um, and then we got a thank you, a question for Triaxis HD question for Sonic. Who do you think is the best Counter-Strike player of all time? Boom. Mr. Reeds. Mr. Reeds. He will say Mr. Reeds. Player. No, yeah, no, yeah. no, no. Yeah, I'm talking a real game. Was it, wasn't it more like a demo? Or uh, I think CS yeah, was for the best 6? game. Yeah, sure. Uh, There was no competition in 1.6. Ask right. the Twitch chat. Which was the best Which one point six or CS Source? Yeah, let's Wait. go. Okay, better game Source or one point six? Uh, let's let's uh, yeah, maybe we can let's... even have our mod uh, create yeah, a, yeah. a go poll ahead, for this, like a straw poll. We <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got Ace. A lot of people are. are, are Ooh, one, one, Ace, what do you think? Ace, who? Uh, what was the question? <laughs> who's the best player of all time? Oh, do I have to? <laughs> is it like in within all three games? He just said Counter Strike, so I assume all all games count. I have to go with Forest. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the best one point six um, in history is Neo, but Forest mastered uh, CS:GO. Um, I think a, a, a slightly slightly better than uh, than Neo. Let's be honest. And to have been playing at such a high level for such a long time, that's uh, that's impressive. So the both won a major, right? Yeah, one. Mm-hmm. Each, yeah. yeah. Who's the best source player of all time, though? That's the real question. Who is? Yeah, I, have no idea. I don't know any source players. Right. Let's go, sharks. I would Shark. say both play in both play in uh, in vitality. I think RPK was also yeah, really, was also really, 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 yeah, he was really, really good. good. Was also yeah. Good. With a PG fifty. Yes. No, uh, the compact. compact. You remember? Compact. Yeah, exactly. Um, no. <laughs> So we, we got some questions about, um, it's going to sound weird, but but about FPL. Uh, and and they, uh, it seems like fans have noticed that Sipex is the one playing the most FPL, dare I say. Uh, like I said they... before, there's no an issue with Sipex. <laughs> He's my well, man. Okay, okay, the question is, why, why is that? Can, can you may, maybe elaborate on your practice routines a bit? Uh, for example, Peter, I know you almost never play FPL, right? Yeah, I mean... Um... I was actually, without bragging, one of the founders of FPL together with uh, Taz and whatnot back in the days. <laughs> <laughs> without bragging? And then you but I have to brag a little bit. I created it. It's my baby, actually. But I, I haven't played it in... You have left it. I've left it behind, yeah. Okay. I, I, I gave it away. I couldn't handle it. No, I, um, I'm actually not playing FPL at all. And there's no... The only like specific reason to it is that... Well, it's probably changed, but when I played it back in the days, it was just like five versus five running around, not mine, like just doing random stuff. I think from watching a lot of the streams of now, it seem, people seem to be working a lot together and actually playing a lot more together and trying to, to solve things together. So that is really nice. So maybe I should try and pick it up at one point. But I, I seem to enjoy um, playing Deathmatch on my own or working on a server on my own instead of playing together with other people. Uh, not that I don't want to socialize with people, but it just seems to be working working for me. But yeah, that's just uh, just my, my take on the thing. Yeah. Um, then we have I, I just one... don't. I just don't think it's fun. That's, that's probably why. Uh, it's, it's I fair. also think that back in the days, I know that you, maybe you said it was five players running around playing for fun. I think that back in the days, um, not bashing the current players because I don't play there too much, but I kind of mm-hmm. quit because there were a lot of players that are not really top players, and it it was just kind of a weird environment sometimes where mm. the teams would be very unbalanced or yeah 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 true true yeah that's what i that's what i I think that about the general well. level has, has risen uh, yeah, oh, yeah, a lot yeah mm, as you say but i also think that with the practice regime we have and some of the habits it can create playing fpl um it, it can 
make you a better player, but it can also make you a, a worse player uh, if you are adapting too much that, to the meta. Ace. There's a lot of... Uh, is that Ace with his... Uh, yeah, he's fucking nice. killing <laughs> yeah. a giraffe. Giraffe. <laughs> Sorry yeah. for interrupting. No, I think that... Um, <laughs> If you adapt too much to the habits, there's a lot of running through smokes, playing in smokes. Um, yep. Like, you know, like this, if you do this too much in, in competitive um, top 10 CS, I would say, then you would get punished a lot. So I think that you have to find a balance. And I guess that Sipix is kind of a traditional anchor player. I don't think he, I think he just learns tricks and just enjoys playing in there. Whereas me and mm. Peter, we play like other games. Um like Call of Duty right now, or Peter's played Escape from Tarko, we play League of Legends and, and stuff like that just to get our mind off of CS related things when, when we have the time. I think there's a really big um, there's a really big difference from... I mean, like, I can definitely feel that nowadays I don't get the same enjoyment out of playing casual Counter-Strike as I did back in the days. Uh, and when I say casual Counter-Strike, that is like playing face it with friends or playing matchmaking with friends. I don't get the satisfaction and I don't generally think it's that fun anymore and i think it's because that the amount of uh, of obvious of hours you put into team practice and becoming a better player overall just takes away a lot of my uh, my enjoyment so i feel like whenever when i when i sit on a server uh, finding new uh, grenades or making a new tactic or playing deathmatch i feel like i'm actually improving on 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 being a better player instead of seeing it as something to kill time Whenever I, pu I, I put myself in there on a server, it's, it's mainly for me about becoming a better player and not because I feel like counter is the game that I really enjoy playing tons of hours on. And obviously it has it has changed over the time. And I don't think it's a bad change necessarily because it's also really good that you can get your head off the game and enjoy playing other games with friends and whatnot so you, you don't get like fed up with Counter-Strike. And you do see players like Simple, like he, I generally don't think he plays anything else than Counter-Strike. But it also shows that he just seems to enjoy the, the game all the time he plays it and everything. Um, but yeah, it's it's just uh, I think it's very individual how you how you want to see your spare time being used on the computer, being playing the game that you actually do for a living. But also, if you actually like um, want to play like a game for just for fun to kill time. Wow, that ended up being two very long and great answers. Um, we jump right on to the next one. It's from Nico. And it's for you, Sonic. Uh, da, 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 da. It's Space Nico. How does how does the tournament admins know that you aren't talking to the team outside of the uh, tech pauses during a game? Is there like an admin on Teamspeak, or how does it work? So there's always an admin behind us, and I, I think it's referring to online play. Oh, uh, online. Okay. Um, so online, um, there are no restrictions because I don't think they can actually. Manage it. Make sure that people don't uh, find like a, a way around it. So uh, I was like thinking, okay, because when I saw it, uh, ESL has has done a lot of work and effort to to try and, and um, cope with the whole uh, coaching thing and making sure the rules were followed appro appropriately. Um, and I think that like online, it was a uh, it was a bit difficult to to maintain that. So. I thought that maybe we should join their team speak and then they would move me, but then they don't know if we're sitting on Discord as well. So it's like, yeah, uh, I think they it's a good decision. They also have different tabs open, so it's just impossible mm. for them to yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it was good a good decision just to to say okay, let's just remove it for all the teams because it will be impossible to uh, to control. Perfect. Yeah. Abba Pete is asking. Abba uh, Pete. Abba Pete uh, how much does Confidence and great team spirit matter before a game or during a game. I think it's a, it, it's definitely make or break, uh, especially when it comes to team spirit. I think it's very easy to feel on a team that feel this this comfortable or, or discharged in a lot of ways. And if you as a team end up in a position where people don't feel comfortable or believe in the victory or believe in the process, that is a really really bad sign for you. Um, and and obviously you go through stages of, of, of your career where you need to like uh, evaluate everything but overall i think team spirit is really really important and i think that is also one of the reasons why we've been so good for so long yeah, is that we've had a really good team chemistry and a good team spirit and we've been really good at working our stuff uh like working around stuff that has, has come up and um, but then again i i say confidence is also like a massive thing you can see whenever a, a team like face clan is having five players of full confidence they're almost impossible to play against because they just hit all of the shots. And 
Counter Strike is about confidence. If you hit your shots, then you will have you can have like almost no tactics, and then um, you can purely win by just hitting your shots. But yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, uh, the reason why I just gotta go uh, and fix a charger. Yes, okay. Fine. Phone. Then uh, we'll actually spend the next minute just thanking people for uh, subscribing to the channel. Uh, we got a sub from Sum. Sumsane Slime, Rasmus Anderson, uh, Magiske Marco, Prince Holm, Femalfias, Prince Holm, Prince Holm, Den Gale N, Den Gale N, and Genki Hachstil. I have no idea. Genki Hachstil. <laughs> Genki Hachstil. Shahabibi. Um, Shahabibi. Um, and uh, then right back into questions. Uh, we actually have one uh, mentioning the newest partnership for Astralis uh, with um, with Kult Energy and the Kult. two new products that uh, they will release very shortly. Uh, the the Blood Orange, I believe uh, one is called, and then the Lemon, which is the sugar-free version. Um, Dupree uh, and... Oh, device is still off charging his phone. I can uh, take his question. That's yeah, fine. can you can you take the question? Um, how, how, sure, did, how did how did everything taste? And, and how, how how did we get how how did we end with these two uh, products? In Thank you, situation? Benjamin. Thank you so much for asking the question. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long one, but a good one. I, I, I know. Uh, I feel like a news reporter. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, yeah, we uh, we had a. Um, the guys from uh, Unibrew, not Unibrow, but Unibrew, mm -hmm. they uh, they came around to the office a couple of months ago, and we sat down and we had a lot of like products to test out with different tastes and all kinds of like I think we tasted like maybe twenty different products, and we basically had to handpick which one we liked the most, and there was like maybe eight or nine that we really disliked, and then there was a few ones that was like pretty decent, and then there was a competition between one or two that was really good, and I think that's one of the reasons why we so lemon is like a really um, it's a really common thing. It's like tastes like a little bit like Sprite and everything. I think it's it's, it's just, apparently they told us that that was like the most liked taste of all tastes in the world. So I guess that's the reason oh. why we liked it as well. Yeah, I don't know. So um, yeah, we're looking very much forward to try it out and test it. And obviously, we've also worked together with our uh, performance team. So it's actually not only like you don't get like a sugar rush out of it, and it's just it's it's fitted like that. So I think it's also going to be. Uh, interesting for people that are trying to live a little bit healthier drinking that stuff instead of maybe drinking sodas and, and stuff like that. Thank you. Uh, and are, in that regard, Benjamin. I'm actually going to pluck something. Uh, let, let's see here. So this is this is my jersey, as you can see. But it's the Boragi. Boragi. Currently it's the on, on our Instagram, we are uh, giving away a signed player jersey. And I believe it's... How do you say Rame? Uh, frame? No, frame. I don't think frame. So. <laughs> it's been framed. Yeah, it's been framed. A, bo a box? Uh, no, maybe. Anyway, a ah, box of, uh, of case, 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 case. Yeah, case? Right. A case of the new product. In RAM, in RAM. In RAM is in Billerum. Oh, Billerum. Oh, my God. Like, in RAM, Astralis to the stars. Frame? Uh, like, no. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, this, okay. this brand new product, we're giving away a, a sun clear jersey and uh, a case okay. of, yeah. of the new product, blood sugar or lemon. So uh, go blood take sugar. part. It's on the Astralis Instagram. It's uh, called blood it's sugar. Astralis GG. Yeah, blood, blood sugar. sugar. Right? Right? Let's go to blood orange. sugar. <laughs> uh, blood sugar. <laughs> it's called blood sugar. You will not blood orange. Blood sugar. Uh, blood orange. Uh, Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, oh, yeah, can nice. we get Kappa in the chat? Feels can we get amazing, some uh, Maluko? Maluko. Unluko Maluko. Um, okay. <laughs> blood sugar. <laughs> blood sugar. <laughs> get the new cool blood, blood right. sugar. Blood sugar. <laughs> maybe the, maybe you should use that. I think it's a decent name. Get the new cool heart attack. Blood orange or blood lemon attack. sugar free. The flow, there we go. <laughs> um, <laughs> here we go from Stee. Stee. How do you keep, um, <laughs> oh my God, the chat is going mental. How do you keep being mentally <laughs> consistent under all the pressure of being a pro? We don't. You just 
Give to laugh our way out of it. <laughs> Can we have the question no, again? I didn't pay attention. No. Okay. Uh, how do you deal with with the with the pressure mentally from being a, a <sighs> player? <laughs> you laugh. No. Yeah. I mean, like we try to keep a really good mood with the team and like have fun about it. And I think also like one of the really important things about all this having pressure and nervousness and everything when we play is that. If you sit before a match and you have a little bit of jitters bef before going, let's say you have to play the gra major grand final, <coughs> I think you'd be lying if, if you wouldn't have any kinds of jitters. And even though we have so much experience, you would still end up being uh, a little bit nervous. And I think it's a really good, very good thing to be a little bit nervous because that means it means a lot to you and that you're also hiding your senses, uh, senses in that way. And I think it's really good to be verbal about. So if I would be nervous, I would say to the guys, like, I feel like, Jesus, I have a little bit of jitters right now. Not, not in a bad way, but let them know that how I feel and everything. And but then again, my own experience is when if I have a little bit of jitters and I sit down and I, I take on the I sound isolating headset and I can only hear the teammate's voice and Danny's voice, it just feels like you're in such a comfort zone that you've been in so many times that you just in, in some way remove the jitters quite fast once you get into the game because this is where you really excel. This is where you really know how to perform. So in that way, I think it's really comforting getting the headset on so you lock out like you you eliminate all the crowd noise and everything and, and you just know you i'm here to perform in what i'm actually really, really good at and that's the reason why i'm here all right thank you and then i gotta follow up uh for all three of you when was the last time that you experienced uh these jitters just sonic? before this live stream oh really wow yeah. i'm uh, on a sonic uh -huh. Uh -huh. Nah. <laughs> no, no. Go. I think, Go. Uh, I think, uh, no, but but we always get a bit nervous, like uh, especially when you haven't been on on a on a huge stage for for quite some time. But I also think that we are so experienced nowadays that, I mean, even at at Blast Pro Series in Copenhagen, when I suddenly just got told that I had to stand in, and then I saw a symbol on the server. Um, I was not even nervous, like you have 12,000 Danish uh, fans there, uh, but there was also no pressure on me. I know that, but but still, it's like I think that we are so experienced as a group as well. And also, what Peter says that we've been together for so long, we have a whole uh, performance team uh, behind us, in, in in the likes of Lars and Casper, who is constantly trying to improve stuff. We have had uh, Lars Mikkelsen, uh, a famous Danish actor, uh, probably known from uh, mostly for his. Uh, Playing the role in uh, in House of Cards as the Russian president, um, can't remember his name in, in the in the series, uh, but he has talked about uh, stage pressure and we've had a, a Danish um, badminton player in as well, um, who has talked about uh, what he he does in, in different situations with pressure and how he deals with it. So the whole team behind us, I mean, come on, we were known for being a team. Just uh, very few years ago, uh, these two were. Uh, and including me, were well known for for being chokers uh, when it came to to semifinals. And and nowadays we, uh, we we never really give up. We never stop believing in in the, when we play. And and that is uh, that is definitely due to to some of the work that that the, the team behind us has done. Perfect. Um, then we're just gonna jump right on to the next one. Also taking the time to thank a couple of new subscribers anti.tv and gronkosaurus197 thank you so much for subscribing gronkosaurus. there will be a lot more content coming out on this twitch channel uh in the coming time which no we're gonna uh there are a lot of troll questions as well um peter you got 30 seconds to explaining how to become a better entry fragger because everyone wants to know and i know you've answered it a couple of times yes. already so 30 seconds oh, go yes got you uh, so becoming a, a better entry fragger is mainly about having really good reaction and really good aim but also prioritizing whether you have to look left or right you have to take into consideration if you run a t like a set strategy you need to take into consideration where your team has put up smoke for you and what type of positions is flashbanged. So if you know there's a position that's going to be flashbanged in, on the left, you're going to look right instead because you know you have to clear that position out. And then mainly it's just about uh, having a feeling of where your enemy is going to be positioned in the given situation. Instinct. Instinct. 
Great, 30 seconds. That's how you become a better entry fragger than we. I only had 30 seconds. I had to, I had to be fast. I think it was perfect. Uh, when you are in a clutch, and this goes out to both you and, and the device, if I can stop the chat. When you are in a clutch scenario, is it different how you want the other players to act? Um, for instance, being absolutely silent or just calling as many possibilities <laughs> as possible? How, how, how do you feel like being in a clutch uh, scenario device? Yeah, uh, I guess that for me, most of the time it's just like, uh, yeah. <laughs> nah. if, if, if you... <laughs> That's a clutch scenario. <laughs> uh, I, I think I, for me, I only want, if, if it feels like I'm running out of time and people think, uh, think I haven't seen it, maybe they should just say that. Uh, but other than that, I think it's most important just to let the person play unless he shows that he wants help, right? If, unless he... Uh, fishes for ideas, as you say, say it in Danish. Um, and then I, I think it's important just to to <laughs> let let the player and the clutch play, especially if it's zip. Especially. Now you know how we practice with this. Yeah, see, <laughs> all the time. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, so many questions. Ah, there we go. Cake one. The difference between high sense and low sense. And now I, uh, any which sense helps the most, I, I think. Anyway, device, are you talking? Because you're muted, I think. Yeah, I was talking to the beast. Because uh, I apparently play with a really low sense, and I got uh -huh. criticized a lot for that. Yeah. yeah, you play with probably the lowest sense I've ever seen. You play below one sense in 400 DPI. And why shouldn't that, you do that? Like, I guess that uh, it's just preference honestly i think there are some uh when you get to like the middle ground between high really low and really high i think there's no limit just what you like to play with and of course it's it's maybe suboptimal if, if sensitivity is too high you have to um always uh, tighten up your muscles in your, your arm because to adjust to small angles. i think that some of the high sense players um don't have the same precision so like so as Nico has, because he's a really low sense player and a really great aimer. So I think you just have to find like the middle ground where you find yourself you have precision and it's not um, tough for you to clear angles and you just feel like it's easy to line up uh, nades that are quite hard to line up. I think there's a, a mix of things, but you can't really go wrong as long as you are not seeing too extreme. All right, good answer. I, I think your, ha your hand is covering your mic, but we could hear you. No worries, you don't have to repeat. Um, just for the next one. Baguette, this is, Gabon. <laughs> this is for Sonic, though. We have like four minutes left, so it's a couple uh, of more questions. Uh, what do you, where are we? Oh, what do you think can be improved from the Spirit game? And love the book, Sonic, is from Anders. Thank you. Not gloom. Um, yeah. Oh, no. uh, I think it's. I think it's very tough, actually. I think that's. The only thing that I can think about in the in the spirit game is that we are we got off to a good start on DOS two, and then they they did a couple of things that we started uh, echoing um, and saving weapons. I think that maybe like adjusting a bit a bit earlier. Uh, I can't remember if that was the game that where they always went P, or was that against? No, no they rushed two times. Yeah, they rushed rush two times, right? Yeah, yeah, I think. The whole thing about that thing, but no, I think that we played a really solid game actually, and uh, the preparation was on point. We we uh, we knew what they were doing, and and I think that everything was was running really smoothly. Um, and I think that it always does when you win. I think it was 16, eight, 16 six. So so no, there was it was only like minor details, uh, right there where we could uh, <laughs> <laughs> only, only minor details where we could uh, where we could improve. You <laughs> check Okay, uh, device uh, has no no other comment. So it was we'll me. Come... Oh, sorry. <laughs> da, 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 da. We have one question to go, and it's from. Oh, I I I have I have to uh, take this. Yeah. yeah so... Since it's the last question, since it's the last question, we'll. we'll... Well, we'll take one from uh, from Ryan Johnson uh, in the chat, uh, also because the EPL is going on. Who will win between North and, and Big? Big. Why? 
because uh, Tantars. Because of Tantars, yeah, he would kill them all. Yes. Chaps. It's because it's online. No, I'm kidding. Um, I think Big is actually the better team right now. Yeah, but according to the stats, I think. No, but hello. It's online. Right. You think? <laughs> 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 that was a great question uh, or answer, Peter. You belong on an analyst desk for sure. I know. Okay, so <laughs> the consensus is though that Big will win the game. Uh, pff, I don't know. I mean, maybe. No, I, I, I I'm gonna take it back and say the North is gonna win now. <laughs> I think okay, North, we'll North will win. Uh, okay, so we got Big. We got North. The queue is go yeah. watch it after the stream. It'll end in in a minute. Uh, William is asking is Secret Lab a chair should buy? Uh, Sonic actually did a video that we'll post because it was so great on why you should buy a chair like uh, the Secret Lab chair. So, so the short I mean, I've been in this game for 20 years. I'm a big boy. This chair is solid. It's really good. You sit comfortably in it. I've only been used to these IKEA chairs ever since we started hanging out in the cafes. Um, this is a really good chair, and if you're like, oh, they're sponsored by it, go down, find a store where they have it, sit down in it, you will love it. Actually, it's a really comfortable there chair. There we go. Yeah. It's a good chair. Okay, uh, that's it for uh, the second edition of Astralis Talks. Thank you so much to everyone asking questions, showing support in the chat. Uh, do you guys have anything you want to say? Just want to say thank you all for the support and thank you for tuning in. It's been a pleasure having you guys here. I am confident that I will also be part of the third edition of this one. So if you want to see more of my beautiful face, you have to wait until we do. Next time. We do. Yeah, I know. So and stay home. You're rooting. Stay home. God damn it. Stay home. Stay safe. It's really important. Listen to your health authorities. Yeah. Uh, and you remember, feel that we've been to home too much now. We're starting to get like, a little. <laughs> A little nutty. Uh, guys, remember that uh, when the stream ends, uh, stay muted for just a while, Peter. Oh. Yeah. That's just yeah. something I want to say out loud to the thousands of fans. Why is that? Did something happen last time? Nothing happened. Okay, anyway, thank you so much for watching. Go watch EPL and uh, until next time.